watching all the exits, they're checking everyone that leaves. There's no way to get out of here. Uh, yeah, so listen, um, you've done a lot of cool sequences and shots in your career. I'm curious, what do you consider the toughest shot or sequence of all your films? Hmm. I mean, I don't know if there's a, a single one, but two of them that popped into my head was that train shot on Unbreakable where I'm moving the camera and then the the kind of the one -er shot on the beach in old where where the, the, the young woman has the baby and you kind of constantly moving and she's pregnant and she's getting bigger and bigger and then has a baby. That was those were some difficult shots. I, that's another thing I wanted to ask you about, which is oneers. So I love oneers. And obviously, we, you know all the good ones. How much when you're writing a script are you thinking about this could be a one -er, And how much are you thinking about when you finally start breaking down like how you want to film something, this could be a one -er. And what is that conversation like with your line producer and the people in terms of do we want to shoot it like that? Or is it just easier not to? You know, I don't really think about shooting it at all when I'm writing. Uh, at all, I don't know. I don't. I'm just the writer at that point. Um, and, and, and strange, I'm really when I get to the place where I'm thinking about how to shoot it as the director, I'm in, I'm I'm reinterpreting. I'm interpreting the writer and saying, why did the writer write it like that? Why was my instinct to write it like that? And then and then some images will come. Um, I I you know I, I let the tone of the movie kind of dictate it. So for like trap. Trap was the most shots that I'd ever done, which I was shocked at. Um, as we were starting to come up with the shots, me and the storyboard artist and Sayo, the cinematographer, it just wanted to have this cadence. It's like an it's an action movie at a concert, and it wanted to have this kind of rhythm to it. But the next one may want to have this kind of string line tension of of just quiet movement. That didn't match the buoyancy of what the movie was, Trap. So this one had a lot of kinetic things to it. So each movie has its own language. My question is, I know you must love oneers just like me. How much are you thinking about, have you ever thought about, I want to do a lot of oneers in this? Or does that not ever, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. For me, and generally speaking, what is the simplest way to shoot the scene? That that what is the least amount of shots I can do to 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 convey the 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 scene? So that's my general philosophy of it. Um, and you'll say, like, even in Trapped, there's a couple moments where I do these kind of longer shots, and it's arrhythmic in this particular movie, but. Uh, you know, you, you, it, 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 sometimes it's in a, in, inappropriate to kind of tell you this, 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 and this in the scene. It's better to kind of draw the audience's t attention towards an energy, a movement, and have everything kind of heard off camera a bit. One of the things about this is you have to do this tricky balance of Josh is on screen like 99% of the movie, and yes. you have to root for him a little bit because you want yeah. him to escape, but you can't ever like fall in love with the character because he's a serial killer so talk a little bit about that line and you know what i mean because it's a tricky line to maintain yeah i mean that was the fun of it for me that was the fun both as the creating and then the audience members to to uh uh put it put you in the shoes of him and then kind of against your will root for him he's both the protagonist and the antagonist and so it's fun to kind of flip and then the structure of the movie at some point shifts to him as the antagonist and so you're frightened and and that's a kind of a a beautiful thing of structure which i enjoyed writing and josh enjoyed performing of you're with him with him with him and then you're frightened uh you know every time i've spoken to you i bring up the same thing which is editing because it's really where everything comes together so how did this film possibly change in the editing room in mm -hmm. ways you didn't expect well, again, because it had the most shots, it was it had this kind of rhythm, this cadence to it, uh, kind of like a, a fun, like, because it's in one day that the movie takes place, on this specific day, this movement, w thrillers require kind of pressure. And so you have this incredibly buoyant environment, the joy of the concert and the, and the kids and the fun and the humor of all of that. So that was always there. So we had that from like in, in the two and a half hour version of the movie. It, it was full of laughter and joy and all stuff. And as we squeezed it to get the balance of the thriller to, to be a string line there, then, then you get that balance where um, you're getting the buoyancy and you haven't lost the god of the thriller. Do you show anyone that two and a half hour cut or is that always just like the, your editor and you and, you know? 
No, no, I, I do show groups of people that early because I very careful to make sure that we are, you know, keeping everything that's that's absolutely essential and the joy of the initial beauty. You don't want to you don't want to lobotomize it. You want it to have the, an intense version, a intensified version of what that two and a half hour version felt like. You want the joy and the cinema and the and the buoyancy of the of all of this being at a concert and all of that stuff. But the the juxtaposition has to be just right. So you cast your daughter as the pop star. I'm curious, how much did you guys? What is it actually like working with a family member like that? And you know, like if she's not giving you everything you want on a take, what is it like? What is it like? To, you know what I mean? Like directing a family member. Yeah, it wasn't quite like what you just said. It wasn't I cast her as the pop star. We 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 talked, you know, we came up with the movie together and we were saying how do we do a movie where the music is diegetic, where you the the songs that are written there's an entire album that the that the characters are listening to and that are critical to the plot and it will now comment on the overall feeling of the piece. So it was really interesting process different than than others because we were thinking about purple rain a lot when we were doing this about you know and and the juxtaposition of like seemingly you know things that can't go together like you know an a actiony movie like die hard or the darkness of like thrillers or silence of the lambs like how do you bring all of that together and in this this balancing act and so we built it slowly together of like hey who is this fictional character what is what does she mean Oh, let's set it at a at a concert in an arena. Okay, how what is her connection to the thing? And then I start writing an outline. I go, okay, can you write fourteen songs for this? And it was an Herculean task. So it was like she wrote and performed and did all this stuff. And this as it's emerging, you know, what is the role of what does she represent in the movie? So it was a really w wonderful experience of taking like a musician's world and then a filmmaker's world and making a kind of a hybrid art form. It's also interesting because uh, Taylor Swift is, you know, completely in the zeitgeist yeah. and you're showing, you know what I mean? There, there's the correlation of young fans or fans freaking out over someone. It's very on, the, you know, it's, it's in the culture right now. Yeah. And that was really unexpected in the sense that, you know, this was obviously thought of years ago and, and worked on for years. And the culture this year has moved so much towards concerts and, and that experience is like, on everyone's mind from, you know, obviously Taylor Swift is the main one and then Beyonce and you name it, Dua Lipa and then, and even like, you know, Billie Eilish or Kendrick Lamar, what he did, there's, there's, it's just culture right now going to concerts. So really fascinating how that emerged over these years. Uh, you know, I will ask you about this. I know you're obviously working on another script right now because you're always working on a script. So <laughs> what, what can you tease people about what you're writing? Well, I'm still learning about it. It has a it has a really cool kind of flip on a genre. So I'm very excited about that. You know, that it's kind of an I've had been done this particular subject matter and and I've always been interested in it, but it's it's an odd way to come into it again. I think I'm really interested now like like with trap kind of going at subject matters like serial killer but doing it in a from an angle that you haven't seen before. So you're making a romantic comedy. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, what what, I, what is, I, I am curious because you work so you work all the time. How do you know when you're writing something or when you come like when you're feeling something that this is the idea I want to spend the next two years on? I think it's irrational. There's like a, there's like a love love thing, you know, like, for example, the closest thing I can think of is like, you know, we put the trailer out for Trap. And it, it was such an incredible reaction to the trailer. It, my, I'm the biggest of my career. That feeling that they had about the premise and watching those images I have two years earlier when I'm just imagining it. And I'm like, oh, a concert and they set a trap for a serial killer, but you're with the serial killer. Whoa, this could be so, so fun, you know? the kids are screaming and he's trying to get out and it's really inappropriate in this color and the, they're being silly and, and he's trying to be a dad. And I was like, woo, that's that's fun. And so that there, I, in a way, the way you react to the premise is two years earlier, I get excited and I want to know how that ends. Sir, I got to wrap. I'm just going to say, oh, big fan, you know that. And please do consider uh, the directing panel. I would love to have you on it. Well, always nice to see you, brother. 
Nice to see you. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Take care.